meeting to order at 7.33 p.m. Do the roll call. I show Charles Randy Sneed, Julie Stauffer, George Null, Dustin Johnson, Suzanne Unball, Derek Jones, and Lisa Mullaney. A stand in pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. <laughs> Minutes of September 21st, 2016, regular session. Second to accept the minutes from September 21st, 2016. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Citizens' inputs. I have some things. Fire Prevention Week kicks off this coming week. So, the fire department. Public education office will be at the school. We have a hog roast. I should say we have a hog roast. There's a hog roast to benefit the good family at the fire station next Sunday, October 16, 2016, from 11 to 2. Adults $10, $5 for 12 and under. The Argus Fish Fry, Fire Department Fish Fry, will be November the 12th, from 4 to 7. And the firemen will be walking the town Friday the 21st and the Friday the 28th at 5.30 in the evening until it gets dark enough and the mosquitoes carry us away, we quit. <laughs> so just to let people know, we'll be knocking on doors those Friday nights. That's all I have. Anybody else? Update on the comp plan by May Cog. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, move that. You're not to squeeze in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is Tony Risma. I work with the Mission Area Council of Governments, and we just wanted to provide you just a quick update on the process where we've been thus far. Uh, we've been working extensively with the steering committee. Uh, we've held three meetings thus far, conducted interviews with key town representatives, um, about 15 people for each of the seven elements identified by the state. Um, we've been working on developing those current conditions for each of the elements. And the next part that we want to start off is the public engagement piece. And that's what we're going to be kicking off this coming Saturday on October 8th. And each of you have a flyer and um, there's also one here in the front of the building. And it's been posted up around town um, as well. So we just wanted to let you know that the, there's been many, several opportunities for the public to be involved through this public participation process. Uh, beginning, like I said, this Saturday on October 8th, it's going to be held at the Argus Community School Library from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's an open house style, so you can come and go as you please drop in. Um, we're going to have a series of activities for people to be engaged in getting them identifying you know, what their likes and dislikes with Argus, and then you know what they see as opportunities or any uh, threats in regards to these seven elements. Um, the second piece that we're also want to 
begin kicking off on that Saturday, October 8th date, is the uh, public input survey. And this is gonna ask additional questions other than what's gonna be provided at the workshop. So if you all could, we encourage that everyone attend the um, open house this Saturday, as well as participate by filling out the survey. It's gonna be available online. Um, we'll provide it to Lisa so that there's a link provided on the town's website that we can go to and click on. Um, we'll be sending out uh, postcards to all households in the Argus, with the Argus zip code of 46501. So anyone with an address with registered for that zip code will receive the notification about the survey. They'll have an opportunity uh, to access it through a QR code as well as going to the website. And I'm gonna talk to Lisa about providing a hard copy. Just a few here at the, um, at Town Hall, or the municipal building, so people can have that option to, to pick up a hard copy if they so choose to. Um, and so, um, that's really all I had. Um, but are there, are there any questions that you all might have? I encourage everyone to participate. It's, it's a great opportunity for the town of Argus to hopefully revitalize and you know, just really rally the troops and really just get the town on support with one another. So. Did you check out the web page? I put in Yes. Well, Bob put it in big front page. So. <laughs> it's posted on Facebook, mm -hmm. and the school's Facebook. I've talked to the library, and so flyers are often around. So, yeah. everyone here listening, I encourage you to all come Saturday. <laughs> uh, Ten to two, just come in as you go, as you please. All right. Thank you. Thank you. NCEDC annual report. Well, Jerry gives you that. Let me give you the September activity. You're welcome. Thanks, Great. Thank you. Under marketing, uh, four different activities, light industrial proposal was submitted. There have been two site tours uh, under Argus Economic Development Progress uh, Public Relations. Jerry met with uh, Mark Vanderwin and Suzanne Umbaugh. Under Bayer, uh, a meeting with uh, Jerry met with uh, Tamco, Gary Knighting. Under product development, he's been uh, working with uh, a couple of different banks, IAPs, Centier to line up uh, lending. And under residential development, met with Suzanne Umbaugh and the owners of Colonial Estates. Yeah. And also met with the majority builders at the uh, Argus Industrial Park. Under the mar uh, marketing, under the marketing video, all interviews have been conducted and the video is in production. The comprehensive plan, the straight committee met on September the 12th. There was 14 people in attendance. Uh, I know, uh, I think a couple of uh, council members were there. Comprehensive plan, uh, the next comprehensive plan is October the 8th from 10 to 2, Argus School. And under internal communications, uh, Jerry has been uh, attending most of the Argus Council meetings, and of course he uh, had prepared the uh, August uh, activity report for me. Any questions? <coughs> I'd like to hear. <laughs> Mark? As long as you don't have any bad information to give us, we're good with it. <laughs> 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 Just uh, one uh, couple of quick comments on the annual report. I think page, if I get this right, it's probably page four, the Argus. Yeah. Page four, that's uh, in particular um, elements of the developments in this town. Um, and sometimes these projects we are directly uh, involved with and sometimes we're not. But I use this as a marketing piece. We send this out to uh, prospects, in particular, uh, <coughs> Mark had mentioned that there are two proposals. Proposal is somebody's looking for some information. 
So we want to push out what's going on in and around the county, and in particular for the Argus community. Page 11, there is one page. If my chairman was here today, he'd tell you that that was whittled down from about five pages. We try to be uh, a lot of activity within the organization. Just a, uh, one other mention on the marketing piece, the video, if you will, it's almost finalized. Uh, there was one uh, small correction that big idea is, is making. So I anticipate by next month we should have that video. I, unfortunately, I'm the only one that's seen it, but I like it. So I, I think you guys would be very happy to share it. So how soon are we going to be able to proof it? After I make sure it's <laughs> proofable. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Sure. Attorney report. <clears throat> so a few things to let you know about and also take action on. Uh, first is this. There's been a revised dispatch service agreement that's been uh, sent to the town. If you remember back in August of this year, we signed that uh, dispatch services agreement. Does everybody familiar with that? Recall that? Um, there were two changes that they wanted to make to that agreement, even though it's already been signed. I sent an email out to the council as well to uh, address those. One was simply adding a North Township to a list of fire chiefs that would be eligible to sit on this dispatch board. Um, I don't think that's really probably a big deal. It really doesn't affect us much. The other change was changing a payment date from July 1 of each calendar year to January 1 of each calendar year. Um, meaning that the first payment would be due in a matter of a few months as opposed to next July. Um, they're asking for the council's approval of that, those two changes. They submitted a clean copy to basically substitute those pages, but I've gone through what they had sent to us, and those are the only two changes that I saw, which is in line with what they told us they were wanting to have changed. So that's for your vote and consideration. <clears throat> Do we need to vote on this tonight? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say I have to vote on it tonight, but it does need action at some point. clean copy Randy but I'll confess it's basically pages 4 through 12 not something you're going to read in 20 seconds. Right, right, that's, and that's fine. We've already passed, we, we passed, we, we just we need to vote on if we'll accept the changes. Then. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion that we'll uh, accept the changes to the, uh, what is this thing it's called? Dispatch. Dispatch, dispatch, service dispatch service agreement. Dispatch service agreement, yes. Second. <clears throat> Can a motion and a second to accept the changes to the revised dispatch service agreement. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Quick enough. <laughs> you guys, the other thing I just wanted to bring you up to speed on, and I got that clean copy piece of what they're asking is basically that that just gets substituted keep the signature page but resend it right. so you have to sign it. no you won't have to sign it let's just say keep the signature page yep there is no signature page on that they're just asking that that be substituted that's okay um 
The other thing, just to let you know, last time I told you about RMC and they were going to be getting me a joint petition. I don't have that yet. Uh, that attorney's not gotten that documentation from me yet. Just wanted to keep you in the loop and up to speed with that as much as I know. The other thing that um, occurred to me was that it's that time of the year where we need to consider leasing the 75 acres as farm ground if we again intend to do that. That's a process where we've got to do some publications. So in order for us to get that set up and ready to go by January 1, 2017, it's something that we're not late uh, doing it right now, but I am bringing that to your attention. And I would say by certainly the first meeting in November, we need to get the go ahead from the council if we're going to do that. Um, and it'd be, I think, a little more efficient to, to start it at the next meeting. Certainly nothing you have to act on this evening. But just bringing that up to your attention, that's something uh, we need to think about and consider. And that's all I had to report. Thank you, Jerry. I may remind you again at that next meeting as well. <laughs> I move to accept the attorney's report. I second. We got a motion and a second to accept the attorney report. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Ordinance 2016-11, 2017 budget. You should have in your packets a copy of the gateway ordinance. I just need signatures on the copy that's in front of Dustin, if you guys do pass it. All three? <laughs> so we get it over with? We got it published? Because you're on the fire department? Well, being so I am on the Argus Fire Department, I am not allowed to vote on the budget for the town. So I will abstain from this vote. I move to pass ordinance 2016 11 on all three meetings. This has been the rules. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2016 11 on all three readings. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. I was just right, right, right. Motion. Passes. The old library. Everybody got a quote in front of them. I think we've kind of drug this thing out long enough. Uh, we have to get to a point where we either vote yes or no to leave it up or, or tear it down. Uh, I don't think we this I mean we can keep going on and going on. Uh, we've seen how much it's gonna cost and everything. I, I would uh, personally like to make a motion that we would make take a vote on it, whether we want to yes or no we'll keep it or tear it down you notice this quote didn't have the foundation anything to do with the foundation being fixed right and that's we apologize that that wasn't in there and also apologize that nobody else gave me the quote yeah. and three people were supposed to come in and do this
<laughs> Too many rock and hard places on this one. Everybody's got an opinion of whether we need to keep it for historical and fix it and possibly use it for ourselves or to take it down or and just have it and use the money for something else. If we would build a new building there, of course it has to meet all new codes, sprinklers, the whole nine yards. If we would decide to fix this one, we can get away with not all of that, depending on that. Two extra two, and all of that. And there's a lot. It's, yeah. This this quote was just to right to make it look good on the outside and keep it from rotting away anymore. Yeah. Repair the roof and pack the crap. accessible that does right. not fix the foundation and it doesn't do anything to the inside it doesn't do anything to the inside <laughs> well we it, it was voted on once before to tear down Jim Jim I think Marky remembers this it was it was voted to tear down and then it, it never got done because they thought somebody was going to come and use it. The county, the county came to us, and we thought it was going to be used by the extension office, and then the extension office, believe, and that fell through. Well, then that got the wheels turning. Well, maybe they thought they wanted it, maybe somebody else would want it, so that got postponed, and we've been in limbo ever since, trying to figure out. So the vote was. You guys are arguing about whether we fix it or replace it. Why do we even need it? Or how many to address that? Just tear it down and have an empty lot. Exactly. Just a 12 foot privacy fence. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not saying I'm not, I'm not saying I'm for that, but I mean there's a, there are three options. The whole yeah. thing is is we really don't have anybody knocking on the door wanting to use it. it, it and even time you'd spend fifty or sixty thousand getting it fixed, you know, That's then funny. that doesn't do the inside. So now, the time you're going to get done, I'm guessing to meet codes and everything, you could be seventy-five to eighty thousand plus. Go ahead. What is the cost of tearing it down and clearing that out? It was sixty thousand last year. Okay, so you're still eighteen thousand to the good by fixing it. Because <laughs> well, you're going to spend more. That's on. just the outside. That's just I, the I understand outside. that. I understand that. It's going to cost you sixty thousand to tear it down. It's going to cost you forty-two to fix the outside and seal it. You still got eighteen thousand to spend on the inside before you break even either way. 
Yeah. Right? They're still nobody wanting to use it. That wasn't fixing the foundation. That wasn't fixing the foundation. I understand that. You still got eighteen thousand to play with to do that. Oh, hey, it'll take more than eighteen thousand to fix the foundation. I'm just asking. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I know. I, you know. I mean, the cost effectiveness, one way or another. If it was a historic building and we could use it, you know, get some grants, and it's, it's just an old building. And it, well, and then you got to figure the cost of what are you going to do because when you drive by there, all you're going to see is an open alley, bunch of dumpsters, everything else. So you're going to spend money to block that off and then something else. It, it, it's a lot of money either way you look at it. Parking place. Make a parking lot. Parking lot. You've still, you still got to hide the dumpsters. You still got the back of all those buildings that look terrible. Exactly. And you're going to be able to see them. Have a great video. <laughs> we need to make a decision and do something with it. It's just it, each year, if it sets, it gets worse, and every time it gets worse, the price is going to go up. And if we're going to fix it, fix it. If you're not, tear it down. I voted to tear it down the last time. <laughs> so can we have a vote? Yes or no vote? Can we? Can we? I make a motion then that we vote yes or no to tear the old library down. <laughs> to the point. Do you want a time frame on this? Because that's what we did last time. Well, yeah, then there'll have to be a time frame. It, it should, you know. It's still the, public work. We've still got to look at Right. you got to look at our legal stuff. Yeah. 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 I'll second, just so it doesn't die. I'll second. I can't get in just to doesn't die in the sport. doesn't die in the second. The motion in the second. Discussion. I like additional people looking at it to get more information. No cakes. I just, looking at this quote, it just doesn't seem, I don't learn much from it. And they were supposed to come in and uh, explain this and that never happened either. So Yeah, they um one real harsh bad winter is gonna be in worse shape than the I don't have a problem. It's got what are you going to do it or not? I know how I would vote tonight. Right now. But that's. Up to you guys. There's a motion in a second. I think we should vote. You were on the library board when they wouldn't even fix it for that. They were on the library not, board. I've never, no, uh -uh. never been on the library board. But that was one reason they left because yeah. they said it wasn't The condition suitable. inside was terrible. It was bad. Yeah. But if you would fix it up, take the money and fix it up, that might bring somebody in that would want to use it. Right now it doesn't look nice on the outside, except it is our old library. I mean, that's my suggestion. And you tear it down, you've got all the backs of all those other buildings. you got the dumpsters. you got old cars that are parked back there. It's going to be an eyesore until you do something. That's why, I mean, I've talked to several people about it, and that's the way they feel. If you fix it up, it's probably going to be better than the building across the street. Oh, no offense, that thing. You mean right. the service station? Mm -hmm. The service station? Uh, I mean, uh, police oh, the police department oh, slash building. Yeah, building. Right, that needs that's a, a lot oh, of work. He needs another roof. He needs a new roof about every three years. Right, needs door seals, needs 
<coughs> There's a list. <laughs> you haven't gotten around to it yet. No, I. You get a little stuck. That's what you should be good with the Galatian Street. Who are you guys trying to do it? Nothing. There's some of the centrists taking seriously. Yeah, I like to see yeah, okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. In favor of? Yeah, you got it. What are you in favor of? Right. Okay. We have a motion and a second to tear down the old white Right. To tear it down. The motion was to vote to, to, vote to tear, tear down the old white Right. So we're going to make a motion to vote. No. A yes or no. A yes or no. So the vote is mm -hmm. yes to tear it down or no to, to not. Okay. So we've got the motion, we've got the second, so everyone needs to vote. Right? Right. Okay, so, so I'm, I I'll say vote yes. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> I am 50 50 on this. I really am. I mean, we have one court here that they didn't seem to. Just say Yeah, we're still voting. This man just for you, I guess. We're still going around the table. I couldn't vote on the last one. I'm jumping in on this. I got to go to work at 8, guys. In the morning. <laughs> I'm right. a little bit earlier than that. Yeah, everybody's six in the morning. <laughs> Opposed? Aye. Because it's coming down. She passes. All right. Oh. You want time to get stuff out? I got a question. Are you going to contact a contractor to tear it down? Yes. No. And we no. Can. We're no. No, no. We're going to look at the public work statutes and make okay. sure we're doing things the right way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Just yeah, jump in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've already gotten some well, stuff out there. Wow. Well, we're moving things. That's fine. That's no problem. Okay. But tearing it down is an alteration. Right. Tear down anything you you can you can tear down anything in there that should come out can be taken out at any time. I took the old maps that you all saw. Right. They're here now. Okay. Moving on. Cemetery meeting date and time. Are we ever going to go there? Um, we we had a workshop and we spoke about a cemetery meeting date and time. Um, so we need to set that. So we're looking before the second meeting of the month. I'll make that motion that we hold our cemetery board meetings before the regular meeting at 7 o'clock on the 2nd for the third Wednesday of the month. Third. And I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to hold the cemetery meetings at 7 p.m. on the third Wednesday of the month before the second meeting. All in favor say aye. Um, aye. 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 Motion carries. Board openings, Marshall County Tourism, Planning Commission, Redevelopment Commission, and BZA. If you're interested, submit your application to the treasurer. So where are we on the BZA right now? How many short to make it work? I don't know. No. I think we only have three members. I think there's only three since Don. Right. Him and Chuck came into town and talked about turning part of that over the county too, but we would have representation if the other towns decided they wanted to do it. So that we're all uniform. We'll always have representation because we write our own land use book. So we always they always have to still go by that. Right. 
take an override at any time. That's honest. No, so I'm thankful. Any other old business? New business. Resolution 2016-9 power charger. Yeah. Thank you, motion to pass resolution 2016-9 power tractor. Second. The motion is second to pass 2016-9 power tractor. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Hyperwave presentation. <laughs> To be able to utilize the water power to put up some of uh, our wireless equipment. Um, we're going with a new technology than everybody else has ever used. Um, it is going to be an LTE technology, so it's similar to what cell phones use. Um, we are the first in the state to uh, utilize this equipment. Um, it is a different frequency than the current people are using. Um, so there will be basically no interference with any other wireless internet provider. Um, it is a licensed frequency, so therefore the FCC utilizes who uses what frequency to, avoid, to help avoid the interference. <coughs> and then our, where our dish that points to our access point in Plymouth, where we will be getting the bandwidth, also will be a licensed frequency, so there will be virtually no interference at all with any other provider in the tower. Um, this equipment uses an online site. Um, our current stuff, you have to be able to see the water tower to get service. Um, so that will give us a bigger market share. Um, more people will be able to use our service um, and benefit from it. Um, it's a very large investment for our company. We're taking a kind of a leap of faith here. Um, the, uh, we have been working with RTC, um, and they are willing to work with us um, with their fiber network, uh, but the, who they can't service, we're going to work with them to be able to fill in the gaps and be able to get basically everybody in the community hooked up to the internet one way or another. Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, we would like to obviously get the raise the approval. We, uh, we're trying not to butt heads with anybody. We just want to uh, get up there and get things rolling and try to help out the. Uh, so you, you'll be able to turn this internet into more of the rural areas? Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, exactly. Because because they're, they're, since they're the fiber optics are basically right in the right. city, you, you'll get the rural area. How, what's your diameter? Um, it varies. I can actually answer that. Um, <clears throat> the studies that have been done um, actually show that the, the maps, depending on what the coverage is, depending on elevations and topography, tree mm -hmm. coverage and stuff like that, it's successful up to 12 miles. It can, it can just about cover with the, the two locations that these guys are wanting to set up. It's going to cover just about the entire county with two locations. Is this stuff? Um, I met with RTC actually yesterday about this, and they are also looking at this technology because uh, they, they utilize a, a cell phone network. Uh, through Central Indiana that they own, and they've been looking at it, and they're actually waiting on 
these guys to be the guinea pigs. It's a very expensive system. It, it, the, the company that's, that's making the equipment used to make the equipment for at and Okay, so you're just, you want the leads of space that right. attach your fixtures on top of the tower. Uh, and then uh, there would be no interference. Was, is four-way still up there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This equipment, uh, we have, to the best of our research ability, four is not using anything like what we're putting up Okay, so because the frequency different difference is right. Yeah, like they're operating either, I think, the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz range. Are they maybe they're maybe they're maybe maybe not. Do we have a standard contract? We've got, it's turning into more of a, a form lease. I know right now that we've got the lease with four-way. We've got a lease with RTC and Jim. Anybody else do you know up there right now? We've got four-way and RTC. Right, and you, RTC is not using that technology. It is a back backup. If our fiber went to get cut, then they could microwave back to the office. Um, it's a redundancy thing. Um, and four-way are the only two up there right okay. now. So there's that, I think. There should be that some kind of, we get a tit-for-tat trade with RTC. I think we were charging a per attachment rate mm -hmm. to four-way. I didn't bring that with me. I can't, I, maybe it's 200 bucks per attachment. 150. 150. And we just got a check from them not too long ago, so. But those are the things. I also know that the lease we, we do have other tenants up there, if you will, we want to call them tenants, but they have provisions in the lease that talk about uh, that you'd be obligated not to cause any interference and that, you know, it could be removed if right. it was an issue or a problem. Um, that this should be the standard, Randy, that's kind of in the lease. The other is contacting me if you're going to be in the tower. Yep. Uh, going up. It's, it's called a written communication, but if you send me a text or a phone call, that works. That's how we've been handling it. We want to know when somebody's in the tower, what you're doing. You said there'll be a base station out here, I think. So um, the base station and two The Base station is literally just the, it's a, what do you call it? It's a computer uh, program radio that basically distributes the base signal. station is basically the radio and everything. You have your own backup system in for this and all. Yeah. Yeah. Electric goes down, your battery backup system. Right, yeah. 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 Anything all that? Do you need electric power or electric source? Um, yeah, we will need we will. Like an electric source, yeah. yeah. It's, I don't know what this equipment uses. How far do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were on that. This is relatively new equipment. I'm used to the other setup, I can tell you all about that. Well, they had that, that rack mount power supply they had to keep them through. Yeah. I know we're going to need uh, electrical. I mean, nothing is more than a uh, standard one pin outlet will provide. Uh, it's nothing power hungry for part in there. So. And we can look into um, putting in our electric service or something. There should be electric in the building at the base. We have a radio room at the base. There should be adequate room in there. Okay. It's it's nothing that's going to be point thousands of watts, you know, all day long or anything like that. Most of the equipment nowadays is variable power. Your connection from the top to bottom is that going to be fiber or is that going to be? I would prefer that because yeah. that thing will light you magnet. Yeah, we probably do that for reasons. <laughs> we do have this body. We do have lightning protection too that right. is on our equipment. It comes over the package. Yeah. Do, do they have to furnish some kind of liability insurance too? Then? Yeah, that was the term of the lease. We do have liability and we need to put it in. I mean, if the council's interested in, in taking this to the next step, I guess I would propose we just take a look at that lease. Um, maybe let them take a look at the form, if you will, as well, but also have Jim just take a look at this equipment, make sure that there's not going to cause any issues or problems uh, from his 
expertise. <laughs> but then you guys can make a decision about, yeah, we want to do this, or no, we don't think this is going to work, or whatever you want to do. How soon do you need to be up there? Because I know you lost. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yesterday, the sooner the better, obviously. Um, it would be awesome to invite, but we don't have to. Um, we have to get. When's the next, um, when, do you, when do you think you would want to make a decision on it? Possibly next council meeting, if not. That, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Two yeah. weeks or a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine with us. That way you guys can fill out a lease. Or right. Right. The yes. lease gives you copies of our insurance information and all that kind of stuff too. And it's another provider to be available to this president. That's good. Mm -hmm. well, they're available right now. Right? Yeah. They're still available right now. So this just will give us better coverage. Right. I can send them a lease without it not being authorized or approved. It just so you guys can look at the form, make sure right. there's no issues or problems on your end. And I, I know the town's used to seeing it. Right. Um, I think it's just really a matter of the council yell and want to do it or you know it's going to be an issue or a problem for some reason. But I think you have to take a look at your equipment and make sure that you could, yeah. everything's going to work okay. Um, is that an email address there at the bottom of that sheet that you handed out so I can just send that we see it in that fashion? Yeah. Yeah. That's a simple support. Yeah, we all get yeah. that one. So that's fine. Okay. That's a set of facts. Can we what? go ahead and vote? Sorry. Can we go ahead and vote? I think we can go ahead and vote. You know what I'm saying? Right. If they see the contract and don't agree, then they don't agree. But I think we should vote tonight on this. So I make a motion that we take a vote tonight. Or hyperwave permission to use a uh, utilize the water tower with <laughs> Derek's uh, Derek's yeah, right. Come on, kids, put out my mind. And Derek will get the lease ready for them to take a look at. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second to let hyperwave. Occupy the water tower, but they're going to fill out the lease. They're going to look at the lease, and then um, the definition of Jim is going to yeah. look at it and make sure everything's right. And then if everything's right, I understand. Okay. Okay. All favor say aye. 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 So you got your answer, you just got to get the lease stuff figured out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you, you can try it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I live right over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need this nice. Next uh, cemetery estimate approval. for surveillance system. You actually got two of them here. Just one, eight. The surveillance system is for the building, the police station, the water tower, the bottom of the water tower. 
fire station and everything. So this Lisa Lisa Will this be nine cameras then for my reading? Bob, you're up. Bob. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Bob Barkas. I'm with ATS. This is one of the quotes I'm sure you've got there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for a 12 camera system. It uses two network video recorders. One will be over here on the uh, city clerk's, or town clerk's side. The other will be the table list for our So we'll keep the two systems separate instead of trying to send network traffic across the RTC network in order to try to record on one video. Uh, all the cameras in my quote are all 1080p cameras. They're high def. Um, there are some indoor cameras. The outdoor cameras, I believe five of those, if I'm not mistaken, are going to have infrared range extenders to add an additional 25 meters of night vision to those cameras. Uh, I around with uh, Jim and Lisa and we looked at wherever we could put the cameras at. Um, to save the town money, I suggested that uh, I provide the cable, and Jim's guys can actually run the cable. Here are the camera drops. <laughs> and we basically will turn you at the end of those. So, <coughs> save some money. Save actually quite a bit of money there. It does take a long time. Right now, we currently have four cameras. One of them is currently not working. And um, when we are, it just isn't working. So, um, the system that we currently have, I can't even get in to re to rewind it to see who, like if somebody left the door unlocked the previous night, I can't see who unlocked the door. Um, Jim has no cameras in the bay right now. The police station has cameras, but they're <coughs> yet not, not clear. You know, I mean, you can see who people are, but you can't make out facial features. We did a demo for them with one of our other customers. Yeah. Um, and I think that you and Jane were both pretty impressed with oh, the clarity. It was, it was very impressive. They, we could call it up on any computer or cell phone and get to the page that we needed to get to, and you could see people actually working and talking, and um, it was it was really nice. Will our police department be able to access these through their computers in their car? It depends on, I don't know what kind of computers they have in the cars, but basically they bring up a web browser that have to log in to uh, the website. The NBRs actually have a web server built into them, so long as you have a username and password, you can access that. Can't get on the internet in cars? Why? Yeah. Well, it has to do with the stuff that we're on. It has to do with the IDAC stuff. Oh. Um. We're locked out of the internet. If they could. <laughs> you could. On the phone, we could. Yeah. And yeah, there's a yeah. on that computer. They can separate the phone. Just a simple lesson if we're pulled up and then look at any one of the cameras that you have The cameras that we have are very old. It was kind of like Jim said, pieced together. One camera at a time was installed. They don't work well together. They're not clear. These two separate uh, quotes that we have, two different companies, is the equipment similar or is it just, I don't know, this one's a little higher than the other? The, the one that's higher is a more of a better middleman. Um, I like Bob's uh, ubiquity stuff. Um, it's all RTC uses down there. They have like 25 cameras set up. Um, that they monitor as a service that they provide. Um, but we're not to that point yet. You actually have a ubiquity camera here. It's a, in the RTC server room, right? Here in the building. That's what they utilize. That's what we utilize. That's what I have at my office. Um, City Labs. They utilize it also. And if we have a problem, we always call you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> with any of our computer or our IP stuff so yeah, that's the other thing right now we, I have no one to service any of this we do have a DVR I can't tell you how much memory is on it because I can't get into it 
So even if we did have an incident, yes, being recorded, but I've tried every password known to man trying to get into the darn thing. So I'd have to give it to the FBI and have them crack it. There's somebody a lot smarter than I am. I tried that. I tried all zeros. I tried admin, admin. I tried just a little bit. Of pencil. Did you try pencil? I don't know how to try pencil. And later on, we'd like to expand this to the park, which can be done wirelessly. Is that correct? Yeah, I've uh, talked to well, I've talked with the uh, RTC about what their plans are actually in the park. Um, RTC is not quite sure exactly how they're going to do it. So we don't know how to design the system if they don't know how they're going to design the network. If they're running fiber out there with access points, we can co-locate the access points with the camera or whatever we need to do out there, and it's all going to play nice, you know, together. So. But that would be probably next year or so, right? Right. I mean, uh, it'd be nice if we could just do it all together. Do you know correct. kind of a price point on that? I don't because we don't know what what, what gonna RTC is going to do out okay. there. Yet. So we pulled back on, on some parts of the quote just so that we didn't have to you know, quote something that we weren't able to deliver out there. Do you have any questions for me about my part of it at least? Are these all stationary cameras? They're all stationary. As far as no? No, they don't move or anything. There's no pain or nothing. No, I, I can actually show you what the what they do look like. They're actually smaller, they're kind of inconspicuous. Uh, this is actually a uh, dome camera. Um, this, this does rotate around wherever we need to go. Mm -hmm. This is more of an outdoor type camera, but they're also good for indoors. And they do have, all of them do have infrared. We did pick five cameras though, outdoor, to extend the range of the infrared with a small ring, that, an infrared LED ring that goes on the outside of the camera that extends it. Uh, 25 meters or 82 feet. And maybe that'll be more for, like we wanted to put one that would face the water tower door. Right. So that we, Jim, if he was at home, could look it up and see if anybody was going in or out. Right, yeah. And also, just so you know, it does, these cameras do record audio and video. Both at the, both at the same time. But not the one that's gonna be in here, remember? You can yeah. turn, yeah. You can turn that off. Actually, we could, we logged into one of the systems on before we came up here just to test it out to see what we could disable in, in the system. Right. Least power to the coax cable end, or the gas. It uses an Ethernet, Ethernet cable. It's all powered. Uh, actually, the switches that are in the quote, uh, the 16 port switches, actually do power over Ethernet. So it's just one cable that runs to that uh, to the camera from the switch. And then uh, we actually went with uh, 16 port switches on there just to make sure that in case we wanted to expand it, uh, the NVR systems uh, can handle up to 50 cameras each. They recommend around 20. So the 16 port switches are going to more than handle what we're going to be doing here. What's your longest run? What would our longest run be? Uh, whenever you're dealing with anything over Ethernet, the longest run is 300 feet. Right? Mm -hmm. 300 foot. Right. If we go beyond that, then we start running into some problems. Now, there are some solutions where we can do a POE injector that can inject power uh, like somewhere along that run to extend that. We like don't want to do extender. that. It's basically like a line extender, but smaller. Yeah. Than, yeah. We, we, don't, we don't like to do that. It's possible, but. Yeah, all those options are available. But we, I don't believe any run is going to be more than 300 feet from where we decided to position the various cameras and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> 30 seconds or 30 feet? Um, I believe it's all one year warranty on the equipment. Isn't it? Yeah. 
And we've had some of these cameras in some pretty, pretty rough industrial settings. And the most we usually have to do with them is just clean them. Uh, I don't see the warranty information on here, but I could give that to you. Usually that we're going to tell them when you break down the unit. Right. <laughs> Poor guy. At least you don't have a server problem anymore. That's true. Yeah, that's going to And we did move the server, I don't know if I told you guys, but we did move it from the inside of the room out to the RTC room so it would stay cooler. We think that maybe it got overheated. Exactly. Yeah. Benefit for it. Benefit the police department. Do what? Think it's gonna benefit the police department? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> inside the police department. And we, we talked about that. Can that be added to this? Well, what I want to force for in, in for interviews, I don't know, I suppose. Yes, I will say the short answer is yes. Um, I know that because of the, I don't know what your average interview length is, but the new continuous video recording, um, it may require external storage to do. We looked into that. It's possible to do. It just requires some programming on our part in order to order to get it on there. And then it does down once the video is on there, you can actually download the video, any clip that you want, and put it onto a flash drive or whatever and hand it over to the prosecutor or something like that. We have been looking into it because I know we talked about that, but I just didn't put it into this particular clip. Oh, it is one year though. It is one year warranty. Any other? Yeah. Any Could that be added on to this at a later date? Yeah, that, that's actually one of the reasons why we went with a 16-port switch instead of a smaller switch. So you didn't, the price difference between 8-port and 16-port, there wasn't much of a difference. So we upped it a little bit, for trying to think ahead uh, to the future to see, you know, if we need to add additional cameras. You know, once we get these cameras up, it could be that we determine that, you know, hey, maybe we need to get this one little spot that we may have missed or whatever. Can we make our best guesses on what the camera coverage is going to be? Um, if we get it wrong, you know, maybe you add another camera to the system. But the nice part is, is that if you add another camera, there's no software fees associated with it. There's no recurring charges or anything like that. You just add another camera and it starts recording. But everything that Corey wants could be added to it later. Yes. I did, I did look into that, and everything that uh, we have quoted here will work with whatever he needs to work with. I actually just need to get more information from him at some point. To, to we, We've talked about it in passing a few times or whatever, but we haven't sat down and actually gone over the details of exactly what he needs so that you know, right now he's using a, a just a little camcorder over there. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it, it works, but I thought we were going to the library. Oh, it was a joke. <laughs> 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 so we need it was a joke. <laughs> 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 Remember, you have to sleep at night. <laughs> I'll make a motion we go with <laughs> APIS solutions on the security system. Okay. A motion and a second to go with APS solutions 
on the uh, yeah. camera system? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Top five claims are number one is IMPA for $176,179.25. Number two is payroll number 19 for $31,686.82. Claim number three for United Healthcare is $12,854.48. Claim number four is Republic Services at $11,930.77. Claim number five is in uh, Indiana Department of Revenue sales tax, which is $10,420.43. The total of the top five claims is $243,071.75, and that represents 81% of the total docket. What was this uh, 1141 that you said needed to be written out? You had to change it to Bob Ely. What was? When I went through the checks today, I realized that um, check number 1141 was made out to the Electric League of Indiana. It was supposed to have been made out to Bob Ely for a foundation reimbursement. Um, we found somebody to do the foundation much cheaper than what he had paid. Foundation. Cemetery. A cemetery. Oh. He had paid like $595. We thought it was just for the one. Mm -hmm. And we actually had somebody do it for half that price. So um, we ended up issuing him out a check. So when I realized that we. When I type them in, they go in like alphabetically. Mm -hmm. So EL and EL. It actually accidentally put it as the electric league. So I had to void that check and I reissued that exact dollar amount to Bob Ealing. So he was a high cop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's got it yet. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept the uh, claim docket for the town of Vargas for October 5th, 2016. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept claim docket for October 5th, 2016. Um, claims 1114 through 1167. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Go. Second. 
Randy second. So motion is uh, Thank <laughs> you.